Alright, gig lane as Blackbone Rovers managed to put three in the back of the net. Anyone fancy a Swede? I know I do. That's right, folks, back once again with another match review. And what a joyous day. Rovers coming back out of the international break, not with a hangover, but with three points on the board and three goals. We'll talk more about that in just one second. Before I get going, make sure you hit the subscribe button to keep your bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. The games are coming thick and fast. I've got a preview for Oxford just around the corner. So let's turn the clock back to Saturday at Gig Lane when Rovers put three in the back of the net against Berry. First and foremost, Marcus Anderson on the score sheet, 12th minute. He doubled his tally on the 37th minute before all three points were wrapped up for Rovers. In the second half, Bradley Dack in his man of the match performance on the 63rd minute. What a belter. If you haven't seen that goal, make sure you check it out on the highlights, uh, which you probably find on the Rovers website. Let's take a look at the statistics for the day. Uh, we might not have had all the possession, um, we might be a little bit shy actually, 47%. We had 10 shots, 6 of them on target, only 2 corners, and we're a little bit dirty with 13 fouls. So as for the lineups, let's take a look at Berry. This is how they lined up this afternoon. Fansan was in goal, Humphrey, Edwards, O'Connell, Aldred, Lee, Toot, Riley, Dan's ex-Rover, uh, and the Joes, and Bun up front. As for the mighty blue and white. This is how they lined up. Raya was in goal. Nayimbi, Downing, Mulgrew, Williams, Bennett, Whittingham, Smallwood, Dak, Antonson, and Joe Notto did in fact get his first start of the season. He didn't get on the score sheet, but he put on a, a, a pretty decent performance. Um, so hopefully that's the first of many. He ain't going to score every day, even though we would like to see that, but no. As for my ratings, this is what the boys got. A lot of good numbers around, not even a six mm. in sight. There goes my phone. Uh, Raya in goal, uh, he got a 7. Naimbi 7. Downing got an 8. Mulgrew got a 7. Williams 7. Bennett got a 7 on his return to the team. Uh, Whitting 7. Smallwood 7. Bradley Deck with a 9. Antonson with an 8. And Nuttall with a 7. So a pretty sturdy performance all around and hopefully the start of something new. Obviously, prior to the result, I was a little bit hasty with Marcus Andrews and I have been a little bit hasty with all our strikers, to be fair. And obviously a lot of praise has been going on Joe Nuttall's form uh, in the under-23s and also in the Cups. So I was a little, you know, um, you know, I was getting on the cases of the strikers for, for a good bunch of time. But today, Mark Santrodon steps up and he delivered. And I'm glad to see he got two goals. And maybe, just maybe, that's uh, the fuel of the fire for maybe Danny Graham, Dominic Samuel, and even Joe Nuttall himself to get their finger out there, back the backside, and get some goals in themselves. What about the gaffer? What's he been saying? Let's take a listen to what Tony Mowbray had to say about the match and previewing the Oxford match. Yeah, I think so. In the end, I think we had to work really hard for it. I think that you could see that they're a decent team. They had, a, you know, they managed to work the ball into our final third pretty well. They're a good passing team. Um, but I think right from the off, the threat of the change of possession was always there. I think the first goal was a classic case of that of them pushing their wing back on and us on a change of possession, playing Antonison in on, as, uh, who let our fullbacks deal with their wing backs really, and we, so we were running away against big centre halves and. Um, no, great, two great finishes from Antonison really, and uh, pleased for him. Um, yeah, the team dug in, worked hard, another clean sheet, which is something that is really important for the psychological aspect for the team to keep keeping keep keeping clean sheets if we can. So um, pleased generally. Yeah, I think so. I think it's uh, it's nice. To, you know, it's important first and foremost to win. Um, it would have been nice to finish it off there. We had a few chances in the last few minutes to break away four v two and stuff, and to pick the wrong pass at the death, but. Um, but yeah, listen, three's enough. It's the points in the bag. We have to keep working hard. Um, I, listen, we all expected the, the fantastic following that came today. Expected to see Rovers win today. You know, you expected to see Rovers win. I expected to see Rovers win. And um, and the players had to go on the grass and do it. And they did. And so we're pleased with everything. I, I think his best position is a wide striker. I think it's um, who can dart in and dive in between lines, sort of off the back of people. Um, I think he finds the physicality down the middle a bit tough at times but if he can ghost into positions and, and he's fast he's got two feet he can go both ways um, he can use his head as we saw today so pleased for him pleased for the team um, and like everybody else he has to contribute there'll be times he sits on the bench and has to accept that and there'll be other times where he's as he did today win the football match for us yeah exceptional I think you know I, I think 
Bradley just needed to settle into our football club really. He had two hamstrings very early on, um, which disrupted him. He's had three international breaks. He had a, he had a bit of a social mishap, let's say, and it all contributed to a you know a, a stop-start really season for him so far. But um, he's undoubted quality. He's um, he can be the difference for us on a day that we can spin away and he slide people in or score a goal as he did and. Um, we need to keep him fit and, and keep him, um, you know, feeling hungry to, to help this team win matches. Well, I think he's going to be one of them. I think I think now young Chapman's going to be unavailable for a long time. I think it's an area that we need to try and find another um, X factor player. Really, if I was going to put a, a mark on him, you know, somebody who can make the difference in a game, who can sit people on their backsides, faint to shoot, drag it back, roll somebody in for a tap in, you know, and Bradley's that type of player who can make the difference with the final pass and a little bit of quality in the final third. And I think we do need maybe another one or two of those type of players. And um, I understand that they're coming to be a part of a squad because other days we'll need the power and pace of a, of a Samuel or a Nuttall or other days we'll need the, the, the brute strength of a Graham and the nous and the knowledge of where to go in the box. And so, Different types of players to win different types of games. Um, so yeah, but, but you know Bradley brings a little bit of magic at times. Yeah, that's right. My Coventry City team nearly two years ago now played against uh, Gillingham when Bradley scored. I think Bradley scored well over twenty goals that season for Gillingham. He was on fire, and I might as well get it in. Even though we beat them four-one, Bradley scored a goal out of nothing, and um, and you could just feel his menace on the pitch when you're managing against him, and um, and I'm sure. Opposition managers will feel who's marking Dak, where's Dak, because if you give him too much space in around the box, he can hurt you. Yeah, as an, uh, we we expected the team expected to win today, to come here to win, and I'm sure the fans who came in their numbers expected to win, and um, we managed to do that. We have tough games coming up. It's um, we we drawn a couple that we disappointed to drop two points in both them games, but we're still unbeaten in maybe five games or something like that now it's important to try and go on a long run if we can remain unbeaten and i know there's going to be some draws along the way but hopefully to win football matches back to back to keep going tuesday night's a tough game for us and then we've got bristol rovers at home a game that we have to target and be really positive and you know not just show our quality really and, and, and press on and, and, and try and impose ourselves on every game if we can but be mindful that every every team's got good players, and um, and I thought Berry had some good players today, and yet we got a clean sheet and three points. Actually, it makes the difference. Whatever people think, I know you win and lose football matches on the grass, but um, when the players are put under the the intensity required by the demand of the fans who turn up, it's um, it's why big clubs with sixty thousand stadiums, their players, there's no off days. You can't have a a day where you don't run and tackle and chase and close down and do the good things because the fans would demand that they they have to do it and uh, and when people come and watch like today behind both goals they demand that we threaten that goal and we have shots and we try and score goals and um, and it keeps the intensity in the in the players mind really high and let's just keep pushing on and, and we have to ultimately this football club we feel we have to you know win the fans back over the, the away support has been pretty spectacular since the day I walked in at that game at Burton, my first viewing of our away support. We have to find a team that can you know, get bigger numbers into Ewood and uh, make that a real cauldron as well if we can. Anyway, what do the fans have to say? They've been uh, in an abundance on social media, but let's take a look first at the superstars themselves. Here's Marcus Antwerton. Three points in a clean sheet. Travelling fans were amazing. Thanks for your support. Bradley Dak also said, great three points today. Fans were brilliant throughout and always nice to grab a goal. On to Tuesday now. Three points, clean sheet and assist. Good day away from home. Thanks to the fans that turned up. Unreal support from all from you all. And that was from Derek Williams. Also, Elliot Bennett said, you great away performance. Three goals and a clean sheet. Felt like a home game away following focus now on Tuesday night. Joe Nuttall said, how good were the Rovers fans today? Great performance and win from the boys too. And Ryan Nyimbi, uh, who was a little bit slippery today. He was on the, he was on the floor all the time. So I'm not sure if he had the wrong studs on or whatever it is. But anyway, he said, great win today. Three points, clean sheet, Mason support from the fans. So that was the players. How about the fans? Well, uh, the banter is out there. It is definitely out there. It's not, an, it's not as rich as I was hoping for. But let's take a look at some of the stuff that's out there. Uh, Ash said, uh, I think on Twitter maybe, tomorrow when we beat Blackburn. I think Ash must be a Berry fan. And then he has this picture of all this. 
and then that feeling and one guy another another rovers fan kind of brought that back to my attention and uh, i thought i'd just rub it in a little bit for the very fans also on league one banter group on facebook said uh jason rashka said when the buckets are full and you buy the league before the end of june so this is berry with their big names summer sign-in stephen dawson jermaine beckford callum riley adam thompson phil edwards and today they went home with nothing as for uh, some other folks, some other Rovers, thanks for the three points, Barry. Your fans are shit. Your stadium is shit. And most of all, your team is shit. Uh, easiest three points of the season. John Mellis said, every time I'm out of the country, Rovers do well. Good news, he's leaving the country for two years. Well, hey, hey, hey. Uh, Ethan Tattershaw, I'm not sure what he is, and I don't know what he's doing in to uh, the League One banter group, because it looks like he has a shit stain for an emblem uh, and is it shit stain self says the international break is finished but that doesn't mean blackburn rovers aren't shit blackburn rovers are shit anyway he must have six fingers or something like that because he does not belong uh, in this league one banter group for sure because uh, as uh, far as i know burnley are in the prem so get your nose back to where it belongs dave anthony cross also in the league one banter group said unlucky barry played a very very scabby bastard side their ref was appalling and i couldn't hear a single word from them horse poverers at either side of the ground blackburn were no they get promoted on that evidence really poor team again not sure what you're doing in the league one banter group i'm not sure you're a fan of any one of the sides so do us a favor and do one Next up, Thomas Evans on the One Jack Walker page said, Berry versus Rovers attended 7,159. Of that figure, 3,606 were Rovers fans and only 3,553 were Berry fans. Away fans outnumbered home fans, he says. James Cropwell says, thought Berry were going to beat Blackburn today, question mark. Uh, Marky Mark in the League One Banter Group says, bit of fun for a Saturday evening. Things that are cut adrift with no hope of survival. I'll make a start. Berry. <laughs> Frank Andrews said three expected points from today Tuesday at Oxford will be a harder task but if we can get three here it's onwards and upwards come on you blues and Ashley Scott Roffery also said on the Rovers page where are all the Antonson haters now now I've got to hold my hand up I'm not the biggest fan of Antonson but today obviously I mean, it's, uh, it's one of those scenarios when when that's something that you you or someone that you don't like has done, you, done yourself a solid. Well, Marcus and Anderson, you've, you've got another foot back in the door, son. So hopefully you can roll on with this one. Maybe get a double or even a triple or even just a goal against uh, Oxford on Tuesday. And then you'll be back in the house. My boy, my little Swedish wonder. Let's take a look around the grounds. There are some beautiful results out there, first and foremost. Wigan Athletics uh, took their eye off the game. In the last couple of minutes, Bradford City being 2-1 winners at their place next up for us is oxford and they smashed plymouth 4-0 i think plymouth must have went down to 10 men shrewsbury also kept it late 2-1 winners over our fellow playoff chasers of rotherham to uh extend their lead at the top uh who else are we looking at um, i think bristol rovers coming up they stumble to afc wimbledon and uh, that's the best bit. What about Gary Bowyer? Gary Bowyer's team, 1-0 winners over Peter Brown. That's pretty much all I've got for you today. And if you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. It really does help with the rankings. It can get me up there a little bit more higher than I usually am. And while you're at it, make sure you hit the subscribe button to keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. And like I said at the start of the show, the games are coming thick and fast. Uh, it is the festive period, or at least the beginning to the festive period. So we're going to be talking uh, game after game after game. So make sure you hit the subscribe button to keep you bang up to date. If you fancy something a little different, I'm streaming live on Twitch on Tuesdays and Thursdays for some uh, football manager related content. I've kiboshed the FIFA stuff. I'm onto the football manager. Currently managed late in an Orient, but I am going to be looking at Blackburn Rovers probably in the new year. So stand by for that bad boy. And I also want to give a big shout out to the guys at the BRFCS Blackburn Rovers Forum. If you haven't done so already, make sure you check them out. It's a good opportunity to hook up with some Blackburn Rovers fans and talk about the game. So that's all I have for you. It's a cracking afternoon uh, for Blackburn Rovers. I am, it does make a huge difference when we do put in a big performance. And today, we actually did that. Hopefully, it's a good starting point for us. Maybe we can pick up three more points against Oxford and then roll into the weekend and take out Bristol Rovers in the process. Anyway, that's all I've got for you. Thanks again for watching. Tune in next time. Thumbs up, subscribe. Ciao for now.
Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit that subscribe button. It'll get you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. But if you want to check out something completely different, head over to my other YouTube channel. You do that by pressing the button right there. If you want to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, details are in the description below. So until next time, thumbs up, subscribe, ciao for now.